method of fighting by throwing playing cards with such speed and precision that they actually became weapons. While they could have faked it with CGI, Franco wanted to be as authentic as possible and trained rigorously with master magician David Kwong to learn the art of card throwing. He got so good that he wound up being able to slice a banana and pop a balloon with a playing card. And he even cut Mark Ruffalo's face with one, for real. Damn, it feels good to be back. <laughs> While some skills that actors learn, like playing an instrument or mastering kung fu, go on to become useful in their off-screen lives as well, some of them are not so useful. Well, we hope anyway. At least that's the case for Brian Cranston, who actually learned the process of cooking the drug known as meth for his iconic role as Walter White on the show Breaking Bad. The show, which was often praised for its realism, had hired two DEA agents to help the actors and the crew nail down the specifics of the meth-making process, and clearly it paid off. Even though they never actually used the chemicals required to make the real drug, they paid close attention to the process, including equipment, temperature, time, and the technique behind the whole thing. Joseph Gordon-Levitt has played many roles, but one of his most challenging was definitely 2015's The Walk, which saw him taking on the real-life story of Philippe Petit, the man who successfully walked on a tightrope strung between the two twin towers in New York City in 1974. Of course, Gordon Levitt never actually had to walk on a high wire at that height, but he did have to learn the skills needed to do so believably, even if it was only a few feet off the ground and in front of a green screen. He actually trained with Petit himself, and spent hours and hours learning to balance on a wire cable, starting from a line on the floor and working his way up to be suspended in the air. Daniel Day-Lewis is a man who loves a challenge, and who will do just about anything to get into a character. He proved this early on in The Last of the Mohicans, in which he actually spent a year living off of the land like his character. To do so, he had to learn how to track and hunt animals for food and how to build a canoe from scratch. He also learned how to carry and fire a musket, along with being able to reload it while running. Day-Lewis was so determined to stay in character that he would even refuse to eat the onset catering, instead choosing to only eat what he could hunt and cook himself the entire time. It is a daunting task for any actor to be charged with bringing a beloved character to life on screen for the first time. When Olivia Munn was cast as Psylocke for the X-Men comics and X-Men Apocalypse, she knew that she would have to train hard in order to give the fans the character that they deserved. Not only does Psylocke have mutant powers, she's also a ninja with serious sword skills. Munn spent five months in intense sword training, learning how to use a katana. Luckily for her, she already was a skilled martial artist when she began, so she wound up being able to perform 95% of her own stunts in the movie, and fans everywhere could rest easy, because she did serious justice to the character. While this experience was far less glamorous than her archery training for the Hunger Games, what Jennifer Lawrence learned for Winter Bones is definitely more, um, unique. Playing a character living below the poverty line in the Ozarks of Missouri, there were a few scenes that required Lawrence to do some very un-Hollywood things. Firstly, she had to learn how to chop wood as though she had been doing it since she was a child. And secondly, she had to learn how to fully skin a squirrel, which she demonstrates on screen. Lawrence has never been one to shy away from a challenge, so she took the skinning scene seriously and was taught how to do so properly. Playing Harley Quinn might look like nothing but a ton of fun, but for Margot Robbie, the preparation to take on this beloved character was nothing short of grueling. First, she had to train her body to be able to do all of the acrobatics and the gymnastic style of fighting that the character required. So to do so, she spent six months training every day in order to learn how to flip, backflip, roll, and perform all of the other feats of strength that Harley Quinn exhibits in her films. The other thing she had to do was learn to hold her breath for an extended period of time for the scene in Suicide Squad in which she and Joker drive a car off of a pier and she's saved by Batman. She learned to hold her breath for five full minutes, which by the way was longer than her professional stunt double. While Dave Franco was at one end of the set of Now You Can See Me, learning how to cut fruit with a playing card, Jesse Eisenberg and the rest of the cast were at the other, learning how to do magic like the pros. Stop. 
there's a ton of sleight of hand magic in both the first movie and the sequel, so each actor had to learn how to perform it in a believable way. While they could have just cut to a professional magician's hand in order to make it easier for everyone, the cast wanted to master the skill in order to understand their characters. Eisenberg got so good at magic that he would practice in between takes for the crew, and then break the magician's code and tell them all how he did it. The Haunting of Hill House was one of the best horror TV shows to come out in recent years, and that was due in large part to its awesome cast. While they all went to different lengths to prepare for their roles, no one went quite as far as Elizabeth Reeser. When she found out that she would be playing a mortician in the series, the production crew actually sent her videos of bodies being embalmed so that she could get used to the images and familiarize herself with the process. She then went out and actually trained with a working mortician, going so far as to assist with real-life human embalmings and putting her hands inside real deceased people. Now that is commitment. Oftentimes, when an actor needs to dance in a film, they hire a body double to do all the really tough technical stuff. And while they did do this for Darren Aronofsky's ballet horror Black Swan, that didn't mean that Natalie Portman was off the hook and able to relax and eat donuts all day. Quite the opposite, actually. Portman started an intensive six days a week ballet training program with one of the top dancers in the United States five months before filming took place, and she seriously earned her part as a professional ballerina. She would dance from early morning until night on a very strict diet, go to the pool and swim a mile, and return the next morning to start all over again. Dennis Quaid is one of those actors with such a long and impressive career that it's hard to imagine that there are things that he has not done for a movie. But one of the most remarkable feats that he accomplished to develop a character was becoming an actual pilot. When he was cast as the pilot and astronaut, Captain Gordon Cooper in the film The Right Stuff, Quaid went above and beyond learning what buttons to push to make it look like he could fly. He actually went out and got his pilot's license. In fact, he became so enamored with flying that it became a serious hobby of his, and he still flies planes to this day. Though if he was really committed, he would have become an astronaut as well and gone into space. Come on, you know that Daniel Day-Lewis would have. It seems like once they get the chance to go up in the air, some actors never want to come down. Like Dennis Quaid, Tom Cruise also took it upon himself to learn to fly an aircraft for Mission Impossible, but this time it was a helicopter. For insurance reasons, they won't just let actors take one lesson and hop in the captain's seat and call action. Cruise had to prove himself an expert flyer before they would let him do so on set, so he did. He logged over 2,000 hours of training time before they began filming and learned how to do a 360 spiral towards the ground. All of the flying that you see in the film is Cruz himself, which is as terrifying as it is impressive. You might look back at The Notebook and wonder what special skills were required of Ryan Gosling to star in that movie, aside from being dreamy and maybe climbing a Ferris wheel. Say it again. I want to all of you! Alright, alright, we'll go out. <laughs> But Gosling is a very dedicated actor, and since his character of Noah is a craftsman who builds a house from the ground up, Gosling took it upon himself to learn how to work with wood. He spent two months living like Noah, and wound up so good at woodworking that he actually built some of the furniture that you see in the movie. When watching the movie Chef, it's very clear that the whole thing was a passion project for Jon Favreau. The famed Iron Man director definitely didn't need to learn how to cook like a pro for a tiny indie project that he stars in, but when you've got Marvel and Disney money, hey, why not? He wanted to be as authentic as possible in the film, so he trained with his good friend and chef, Roy Choi, and the two of them went on to develop a cooking show together. It's called The Chef Show. Many non-American actors out there have learned English in order to star in Hollywood films, but it's slightly more rare for two English speakers to have to learn not only a new language, but a fictional one at that, which is what makes Jason Momoa and Emilia Clarke so impressive. Both actors learned to fluently speak Dothraki, that's a fictional language for Game of Thrones. While they could have just spoken gibberish, the writers actually invented the language for them to learn, so they could perform entire scenes while speaking it. Rooney Mara underwent an unbelievable transformation for her role as Elizabeth Sander in The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. She lost weight, cut and dyed her hair, got multiple piercings, and bleached her eyebrows. 
Most impressively, however, is the fact that she actually enrolled in computer training courses and learned how to hack like her character does in the film. She also learned how to ride a skateboard and got a motorcycle license so she could do some of her own driving. What audiences saw was a complete and amazing transformation into the character, and she was rightly nominated for an Oscar for the role. Mickey Rourke is one of those actors who is undeniably talented, but had a pretty rough few years, or decades. All of that changed when he appeared in The Wrestler, one of the most vulnerable and heartbreaking performances of all time. In order to play an aging professional wrestler, Rourke had to transform his body and learn all of the pro wrestling moves. He trained for hours every day for four months, and the result is undeniable. Well, it was only a matter of time before Daniel Day-Lewis popped back on this list. Except this time it's not so much hunting and gathering, and a lot more draping and pleading. For Phantom Thread, Day-Lewis lent his trademark dedication to the role by learning to sew like a pro, developing techniques like pattern drafting, draping, stitching, and cutting. When Michelle Pfeiffer landed the role of one of the most iconic comic book villains of all time, she knew that she was going to have to work hard to bring her to life on screen. We're talking about her revered portrayal of Catwoman in Batman Returns. While Catwoman had already been made famous by Eartha Kitt, Pfeiffer's take on the role involved a lot more physicality and one very special skill, wielding a whip. On top of a rigorous workout and a strict diet, Pfeiffer made a point to learn how to use a whip like an absolute pro. And even 30 years after the movie hit the big screen, she still knows her stuff. Look what I found. Keanu Reeves is no stranger to having to train for his films. He notoriously learned kung fu and acrobatics for his turn as Neo in the Matrix trilogy. So when it came time for the actor to take on the role of John Wick, he went all in. The most rigorous part of the training process was definitely the tactical firearm training that he did in order to prepare, and the results are amazing. Reeves does almost all of his own fightings in these very fight-heavy movies, and if you've seen them, you know that there are lots and lots and lots of guns. He learned how to shoot from other army veterans and other former military specialists, and didn't stop until he had totally mastered the handling of handguns. Many actors have learned to play musical instruments for various roles, but more often than not, it's the piano or the guitar. While still impressive, they're not exactly unique. But when Reese Witherspoon learned that she'd been cast as June Carter Cash in Walk the Line, she had to learn how to play a far lesser known instrument, the auto harp. She and Joaquin Phoenix both learned to play their respective instruments so well that all of the playing that you see in the film are actually the actors. They're not body doubles. Nowadays, Robert Downey Jr. is on top of the world and beloved for his portrayal of Tony Stark, aka Iron Man. But one of his most amazing films ever has got to be Chaplin, in which the actor completely transforms into the first ever true movie star, Charlie Chaplin. Downey Jr. had to learn a lot about Chaplin for the film, but most impressively, he learned how to play the violin, left-handed. While Step Up and Magic Mike prove to the world that Channing Tatum is an amazing dancer, that doesn't mean that he's skilled in all forms of dance. But ever since he appeared in the Coen Brothers' Hail Caesar, he can add one more style to his resume, tap dancing. Tatum had never put on tap shoes in his life before he was cast in the film, but a six minute long old Hollywood style tap dance routine meant that he had to learn. He trained intensely for three months until he was able to tap like the old pros. It clearly paid off as Tatum made tap dancing look effortless, all while singing 